<laughs> I do remember what I had for breakfast. I was just kidding. I can tell you exactly what I had for breakfast. Do you want to know? Yeah. Do you really? No, no I don't think so. Um, you're just one of those people that takes dares. Uh, okay, so you need... That was pretty good. That was pretty good. It was pretty classic. I really wish I had caught that as like a gift. Mm. Look on your face. Okay, um, and now it's in the recording too because we're talking about it. <laughs> so you have to load. So say you have all your you have all your data in one file, one Excel file. All right, you need it separated out in multiple sheets, cleanly. Don't dump all this into one sheet. I right, I have it. It's very simple. Your Excel sheet itself does not need to be complicated. Really should not be complicated because step low is a little baby and will not understand. I don't know what to do. You know, so, so maybe most tabs is important, right? I would, yeah, because that's what your sheets are going to be named over here. If you have a bunch of like sheet three, sheet four, sheet five, sheet six, you know, it, that's just going to cause you headaches. It's like in Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever. Name your layers, right? It's like in HTML and CSS. Give yourself explicit semantic class names and ID names. It helps. Where's the fun in that though? I know. Right, I know. Class one, class two, so much more people. Pick a movie and name it after the people in the movie. I do that. I like. I do. I do Star Trek names. I do Star Wars names for class names. I mean, just or I do things that are like this is three column two p x d, and I forget what it means. So don't do that. Right. Anyway, so you just need to bring it in um, as three separate sheets, uh, the same data source, but or I'm sorry, three data sources, but. Um, you're going to pick the same file each time, and then just pick a different sheet from that file. Okay, it's going to, the sheets are going to load over here on the left. And you just drag it over here. You're not combining them. You just need it, need Tableau to consider it a data source. Okay, so you do this. Come over to your sheet, like your first sheet that automatically is created. I'm going to rename this sheet. This is going to be my uh, city data. All right, then as a dimension uh, for rows. Oops. Drop it in the wrong place. Cities, hey, cool, cities. Now I'm gonna start with population per square mile. Up there for my columns. Yay, so now it's showing me stuff. And I have lots of options. Um, I could do this. Hey, New York City is the most populous city. Surprise. Chicago is the next one. Philadelphia does sort of surprise me, actually. Oh, it's the same, LA. Oh no, it's a little more, LA is more spread out. So this says Philly is denser than LA. Um, that's interesting. All right, so here's a sheet, right? Okay, good, great, that's in there. Make another one, make another worksheet. This worksheet could be um, city per square mile. City population per square mile. And this will be your title, by the way, anything you name down here. This is the tutorial I should have given you guys like three weeks ago. All right, city puppy, oops, population, city puppies, city population totals. All right, um, actually, you should make it more specific because this is the lead in. So, uh, what, like 10 most pop, God, populous cities in the US. And most God damn it, populous. My, my index finger just wants to take over today. Um, cities uh, in the US per square mile. What? City population. Cities. And most populous city populations per square. All right. All right, so for this one then, um, also you're gonna bring in your city names, but then you're just gonna grab your population per square mile. And then you can decide how you want it to look. Um, so you can see, wow, all right. Why is, did I grab the wrong metric then? For this one? Oh, I did. Let's go population. And delete this one, and delete this one, and go city. All right, so city population total, you could do a map, 
don't know that I would do a really a colored map. Hmm, it doesn't like that. This is fun. I like this one. So this this makes more sense to me. Uh, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. Um, this to population totals, but then here's density, and we can see that um, Philadelphia is denser than New York, or uh, sorry, Chicago, by just a tiny bit. Or no, I'm sorry, Chicago is denser, but Los Angeles is less dense than Philly, even though Los Angeles has total, a total higher population, right? So we're just building these different visualizations. Now, I'm not totally keen on how this one looks. Uh, you can change the size. Make it fit the view, circles, line thickness would be nice. I don't think we're going to get to do line thickness. Oh, maybe in shape. Yes. No. What? Line. Line. line thickness. Line. Thickness of these. Melissa, do you know how to do that? No. The thickness of the circles? Size. Oh. Just makes it bigger. Doesn't make it thicker. Just makes this. Uh, shape just gives me different shapes. Hey, filled. That'd be kind of interesting. Try filled. And maybe you do drop your opacity a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, oh, right, I see what you're saying. So back to shape. No, oh, hmm. I don't know. I, I hear you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How do you get effects? I'll look it up. We can figure out effects later. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the way this looks. I just wish it was a little thicker. This I don't really care about. This is okay. Right, but then you got to worry about your labels. Just giving me numbers. Be nice if it also gave me. No. Yeah. You know, you're gonna wanna play around with it. Angle, that's fine. Tilt it. Yeah. I'm not gonna mess with this at all. Um, anyway, so just play around, find one that you feel like gives you the better sense of um, what you're seeing. Like, oh, what are these? Well, I don't know what city this is. I would like to also see the city, maybe. New York is a big chunk of that. This really doesn't tell me much. Fill the entire view, play around your color. Just play around with it. Um, I'm going to go back to circles. Um, entire view, and then play with my size. I like these big circles. Although the circle size would be nice to also have it be the volume. Hmm. I wonder if I could do that. I'm sort of winging it right now. Have this be size. There we go. So adjust the size. The color is the city name, and the size of the circle is um, the columns. Go that way. There. I don't know. That's kind of fun too. Um, but whatever. Play around with it. Uh, you just need to organize a certain way. So that's another sheet. I want another sheet maybe. This one could be, uh, let's see, I've done, these are all city populations. So I'm gonna do, let's do state. Um, so state names. And then I'll do straight up population first. It's gonna give me a bar graph again. I'll grab, do this one maybe. Do some pop is size, and then we'll also grab um, some population over here and do color. 
Uh, let's pick a different gradient. Maybe our red. So do you kind of see what's going on? Like how I'm building this up? Right? Does this sort of make sense? You're picking different uh, different measures, dropping them over here for the marks so that I can, um, the population is, cut, is uh, affecting the size right, of the circles, also the color of the circles by just adding it over here. But on my columns and rows, the, um, this is just generated automatically, um, latitude and longitude, by selecting the, the geography. It knows the city and states and finds it automatically. But I'm just building these uh, most populous cities. Or wait, states, sorry. States. All right, so I have these three. I'm just building these sheets. And then what I want to do is make a new dashboard. All right. Um, I would come over here and affect your size. I'm going to do not a maximum size. Okay. So that it just fills my entire screen. It's easier to work with. And I've got three sheets built already that I can grab. So I can start dragging them over and then kind of arranging them against each other. Uh, if you don't like the way one is arranged, move it around. Drag it over here. You have keys that will automatically pop in. If you want those keys, you can keep them. If you don't want them, you can get rid of them. Like this one goes down here, technically. Oops. You have to kind of grab this middle part with that little texture when the icon turns into the compass. Uh, yeah. Find a way to arrange them the way that you think they're going to look good. I don't care about this one. I don't particularly care about that one. Um, we could show the range here for this one as well if we wanted. Underneath, it does make that a little smaller. Uh, and then this one, of course, belongs over here with this guy. That's a little gigantic, so I'll make it a little smaller. But you sort of see how you can arrange and make your visualizations. This dashboard, I mean, this is what you need to turn in when you're done, okay? Um, you'll export the whole thing as that, um, oh, what the TBWX, what was it? Dashboard. Where did it go? Save, 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 share. No. What was it again? We found it. Work story. Well then, yeah, the stories. Hmm. I haven't played around with the stories yet. The whole sheet. That would be a way to turn in the story. Sorry, I'm just playing around with this, thinking about it. There are different sizes here. Oh, there we go. Automatic sizing. Yeah, okay, so I think turning in your story is going to, um, turning in a story is going to be a better way to go about it. Um, so, but the main, the main sort of conceptual piece here is that your data needs to be spread out and simple, right? Each sheet that you make inside of your file, or even if you have multiple files, um, which if you have one file that's two gigs, you might want to break that out into separate files, I don't know. Um, that you need to consider this one visualization, all right? And then I want at least three visualizations, all right? It should be pretty easy to put together because the data doesn't need to be super complicated. It's whatever you're showing, right? Molly, what are you doing? Twin pilots. Twin pilots, right. So what do you have, like, separate? Again, what kind of data do you have so far? Like right now I'm doing album sales over different albums. Okay. So Plus, so that would different. be like one visualization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what else do you have? Um, I've got like three of them set up already, and then I went to some that have um, social media stuff. Okay. Album sales, tour data, like how many shows they went on, things like that. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So make sure you're asking questions of your, of your data, all right? Some of you, like Dean has a ton of basketball data. You just need to like fit, like look at the data and what kind of questions pop up in your head. Like what is interesting to you? Focus on those things and then create 
the sheets that show that data. Right? You're going to have to pull it out. You're not going to be able to just dump, dump a, a raw sheet in there. Okay? Tableau needs a lot of cleaning. All right. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. No? Okay. Well, I can definitely come around and help more now since my brain kind of woke up. Yeah. Have you found anything that like lets you 